Hey, listen, today we're talking about the Bialetti Mini Express. Put a little theater into your coffee here on Bean Basics. Oh, hey there. Welcome to Bean Basics with Bob and Michelle. Welcome to Sunny Saga Talk, and welcome to the Obus Lab. Hey, listen, today we're talking about the Bialetti Mini Express, and it's different than the Bialetti Mocha Pot, and it's different in two ways. One, you can see from this picture, it's got a cup warmer, and two, it will dispense directly in the cups. It's like a mini espresso bar. It's a mini espresso bar, except, you know, any of our espresso aficionados would take great exception <laughs> to the idea that anything coming out of a mocha pot would be, be espresso. considered espresso, right? All right, we'll call it a mini cheaters espresso bar. Okay, mini cheaters. I want to show you the directions that come with the... Holy moly! This... this do you think they can describe everything that they need to describe on this piece of paper? I think, I think they do. Actually, o only one of these columns is one language, so it's just a bunch of languages. But Wowie. I was kind of humored by, by that. <laughs> um, you know, it, the, the, the packaging is pretty simple. This just comes in a little bag inside that little box, and, and there we go. We can see that there's no Bialetti logo on there, like right here. And this character, can you see that character right there? Yeah. That was made really popular in the 30s. Uh, the, the gentleman that invented the Bialetti mocha pot, Alfonso Bialetti, you know, he, he did a lot of marketing and he had that little character. And there's just some really cool commercials if you ever get a chance to get on YouTube and, and look at some of those. But the principle of this is the same as the mocha pot. In other words, the mocha pot has this heating chamber uh, and here we have the you know essentially the port of filter that goes in it and the water shoots through the coffee through here and then into this retention chamber mm -hmm. and we just did an episode on a percolator and this this was a big improvement in 1933 because the percolator which was also a stovetop method kept recirculating the water. The sort of genius of this is it did not recirculate the water anymore. It was a step forward. Uh, this is a variation uh, of this, as I mentioned. And Bialetti has all kinds of designs on their mocha pot. They have bigger ones, smaller ones, uh, more sleek, more art deco, and so on and so forth. But I've always loved this one right here because what it does is it allows you to take two espresso cups and put them right there and it'll brew right into it. Now as this aluminum base heats up and this stem heats up, so too does this plate. This plate heats up, therefore warming your espresso cup. So a lot of times we would say, hey, preheat your cups. With this, it's not as necessary. Cool. Yeah. So now this makes relatively a small amount of coffee. So if we look at the chamber in comparison to the three cup uh, mocha pot, we can see that the chamber is a lot smaller. One actually fits into the other. So this is definitely a, a three cup here. This will only do two, but that's a good thing because it only holds two cups to begin with, you know. So, um, but let's go ahead and, and get started. Uh, we're using a hot plate instead of uh, a stove top. And let me get that turned up here uh, a little bit. I do want to mention to everybody that we uh, do have an episode on the mocha pot. We'll put that link up here, and it'll go into detail on some of the uh, preparation I'm going to go into right now. Uh, I did uh, note that this chamber holds somewhere between 60 and 80 milliliters of water. We're going to go basically with 60, and we're just going to take it to just shy of this valve right here. And this is a pressure valve, because keep in mind, you sealed everything up really tight right here, and should something go wrong and the water not be able to escape, you don't want this to blow up on you, right? No. No, no. And so this valve will open up and steam will come out and you would know to take this off uh, the heat source and everything would be 
okay. So it's like a little pressure cooker for coffee. Well, yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, uh, we're applying heat. Eventually that turns into boiling water, steam. It does get shoved through the coffee up these pipes here and so on. I think the pressure cooker you're Thing you're referring to is this valve right here, mm -hmm. right? You need some place for it to go just in case something went wrong. Okie doke. Uh, we need to dispense some coffee. I don't think this will hold more than like 12 or 13 grams, but let me just uh, go ahead and measure that out. And this is a little different in the sense that um, we could measure exactly the amount of uh, coffee to water uh, but it sort of depends. The, the amount uh, that would go in here would depend on the degree of roast and so on and so forth. So we're just going to go ahead and fill this cup up. But I think that'll be about 12 grams. Let's grind some coffee and find out how many grams will go in there. Uh, but let me measure uh, about 15 out the get-go. 11.7. 11.7. 16.8. 14.3. Uh, I think 14.3 will probably do it. Uh, we'll keep track of, of how much we actually do use. And I'm going to spray uh, the coffee. And watch out, this is hot. Can you see Woo! that? Wow, okay. I'm going to spray the coffee. That's not necessary. I'm going to spray the coffee uh, because if I spray the coffee with just a little atomized water, when we put it in the grinder, we won't get as much static cling around where it dispenses right here. So let me get that in there. And I'm going to turn it off right away because I actually did grind some coffee in advance. And it's a pretty fine grind. I've got the, the Encore grinder set at 8, which is technically its espresso setting. This is not an espresso grinder. Like, you can't get coffee fine enough for espresso out of this grinder. But this espresso setting will be just about the right kind of fineness that we need for the uh, mocha pot. I'm going to take this out for a minute. I just have something for it to nest in, and I'm going to tear, tear this out so we can get some coffee in here. And you'll see what I mean. It's kind of hard to say, well, definitively, it needs 12 grams or 14 grams. I'm getting kind of messy here. But the thing that I want to avoid is channeling. So I'm going to go ahead and tap that down and try to take out all the channels that I can. And you can see that leaves room for more coffee again. It almost looks like you have to tamp it. It's like tamping, but, you know, although in the episode that I've put up here, I do talk about a light tamp with your fingers, but you have to be careful not to get it too tight or you will create that environment where uh, the water can't actually get through and that steam valve might come out. So I am in favor of just a light pressing here, but mostly I don't want the coffee to find a short route out. The water to find a short route out. Did I say that wrong? I did. Close enough. How many grams do we have there? 10.9. 10.9 and you can see there's still some room to go until you get to the lip. I don't know if you can see that. So Just I'm gonna a little bit. Yep I'm gonna put a little bit more in here yet and see if we can't get that to about 12. Even that out a little bit. I'm gonna get messy here for a minute. 12.6. Okay I'm happy with that. All right. Uh, it's time to fill our chamber. Uh, we're going to use about 60 mils. 60 mils for two espressos would, would be, and these aren't espressos, these mm -hmm. are mocha pots, uh, but two, two 30 ounce doses would be just about right for an espresso. So I'm kind of happy to be in that particular range. I'm going to use preheated water just so that when we get it on the boiler, it goes a little bit faster. But the other thing it does, and you can see this in, in the other episode that I did, is that um, it keeps from cooking the coffee as this, this is trying to heat up, right? So if the water's already a little hot, uh, that's a real advantage in terms of the time that it takes uh, to get it done, but also so that it doesn't heat the coffee before, oh, you know what? I want to do one other thing. Yeah. I like to bloom coffee even here, yeah. mostly, it's less about the idea of a bloom than it is just allowing these grounds to go ahead and uh, get a little saturated, right? A little wet. Let them expand a little bit. And it's not going to be enough 
to drip through. It's just going to be enough to allow it to expand. And this too will help with the idea of not having any channels where water can find a shortcut through. Now the only problem is it makes the base a little hot, but in a handy sort of way, there is a handle right here that you can grab this with. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that down. And in a minute, this should heat up, but also the water will heat up. I'm gonna get two espresso cups here, and we're gonna try this afterwards. So Michelle likes sugar with her coffee. I keep saying espresso, it's not really espresso because in order to, to be espresso, you'd have to have nine bars of pressure. And really the Bialetti only gets to about one or two bars. So there is some pressure applied to that water, right? And as it's forced through the grounds, but that nine bars of pressure is what allows espresso to be done in like 21 to 30 seconds, where this is still going to take one, two minutes if you're starting with hot water, and it would take three or four minutes if you were starting with cold water. Hey! Do you think I made enough of a mess here? I was going to say, this is not for the uh, uh, faint of cleaning up. No, 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 no. But we'll, we'll just try to put a little bit... Just ignore that. Just put it to the side. I do like watching the Isn't it uh, sweet coffee drip through. coming out? Yeah. Right? And it's coming out pretty evenly. So our table must be even. Otherwise, it would be uh, a little awkward. <laughs> so but, if, if the film is ever crooked, that's me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. Right. And, you know, uh, there's just a lot of theater to watching this happen. I mean, you know, what's the difference between this and that? Not much, except there's just a, a great visual here. And I can take this off because the pressure is is so hot that it'll, it'll sort of continue on for a bit anyway. But you see how fast that happened when I used mm -hmm. uh, hot water? I mean, the water was still fresh that I took out of the kettle and that kind of thing. But um, there you go. Can you hear that? I can hear it. All right. So the water got hot. It pushed up through the grounds, through these two stems. Now, if you get in close, you can see one cup is fuller than the other. I Maybe was you just can... wondering about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, right. So uh, I don't know how it divides it once it goes through. And, mm -hmm. and you know, uh, it's his and hers. And But I only put sugar in one of them. But, oh, that's our difference. Oh, right. Okay, yes, well, I put sugar. two cubes of sugar in here, right? Or maybe a little bit of it. But I just noticed this is the one that had sugar in it. So... Uh, babe, I'm going to serve this to you, but keep in mind it just came out. It's super hot, so don't so don't get careful. aggressive in in chugging it. Uh, so uh, before you drink it, because I want you to let it cool a little bit. If we had 60 milliliters and we were making drip coffee, right, uh, we'd be using about 3.6 grams of coffee, right? That that's about how much that that would be the ratio of coffee to that 60 milliliters of water. If we had espresso we'd be, you know, for 60 uh, milliliters, we'd be using somewhere around 19, 20, 21 grams of coffee. We just use 12, okay? Mm -hmm. So we use four times more than drip coffee and just a little bit less than espresso. And that's why we have referred to this as Cheater's Espresso. And maybe it's because we serve it in espresso in espresso cups that were like, hey, this is espresso. But, you know, really, it's just a good, strong cup of coffee, not truly espresso, but uh, cheers, babe. Cheers, handsome. Yep. Yep, it's got all the right notes to me. It, me too, right? I mean, a strong cup of coffee. It's not bitter. You don't see me scrunching up like this, but I definitely notice it's got some strength. And that is the power of the mocha pot, whether you're using this method or that method, it's a great method of producing coffee. So let me ask you this, okay, because we've been doing this lately. For ourselves, do we keep this or do we give this away to somebody or do we crush it? Do we eliminate Run it from this earth? Run over it with a car. car right. <laughs> uh, you know, I think that it's cool to look at. Yeah, right. So my vote would be that it would go back there on that shelf behind you. Oh, I see. With all of our fun coffee gadgetry so cool coffee stuff is a reason to keep it even if you wouldn't use it every day right i got gotcha. you 
I mean, you might have a really good time uh, making two little cups for my dad next time he visits. For sure. I think he'd get a kick out of that. Would he drink two cups? No, you'd have to drink one of them. <laughs> All right, that's enough tomfoolery. So on that note, I think I'm going to say... When you love the world... The world will love you right back. Hey, thanks for joining us. For future episodes, click the subscribe button. Bean Basics is brought to you by OneBigIslandInSpace.com with two Gs.